Uh, all right. So, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone will are able to um, somehow experience some sense of um, uh, mental and uh, emotional adjustments ourselves. So very timely itong topic natin. But let me explore now my screen share. This is our today's topic. I sort of practiced this earlier <laughs> um, uh, because it takes time to upload it. Tama ba ang experience ko kanina? But hopefully, it will come out quickly. So, before uh, anything else, meron ako, uh, while I'm waiting for my uh, slide to finish yung kanyang loading, question to everyone. You can come out of mute or whatever. Put them in the chat box. Um, what is the first thing you will do as an errand no, outside your home uh, after ma lift with ECQ? I'm just curious. Would you like to share that? And the una una yung gagawe. What you will do? Kaklase. Kaklase. Work, 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 work. Malaga. Kuntang church. Church. Wow. Church then. Nice. Ano pa po? Meron bang you know get their favorite drink or ano ba? Parlor, salon. Some group side. Pizza. Pizza. And then, uh, iba naman, like errands for kids. Uh, iba will go. Kung nuwi sa Alfonso, ma'am. Fresh air doon, iba. Oh, uy, sir. Ah, oh, ma, sir. Actually, yeah. Huwag lang mag-alboroto si Taal, ano? Kasi, hindi na daw, kasi may COVID, ma'am. May COVID, ma'am, eh. Ah, nga. Hindi na kaya ang pao. Okay. Oh, okay. Dapat lumabas. Uh, <laughs> Bakit? Uh, 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 sabi ng iba rin, sabi na siya sa chat, ibang visit my mom, sabi ng Miss Evelyn, Claudine said, visit and check relatives. Meet church mate, sabi ni Wilfredo. Okay. Pasya sa relatives. Oh nga, I mean, we, uh, we're very social, ano? Nunis natin yan eh. Family fellowship, sabi ni Miss Epifania on so on. Okay. He bless you naman say, visit nanay. Okay. Yeah, I wish my mom too, no? In the Celestinias kasi siya. Beach! Ah, yes, of course. Sama, sama pa dyan, Miss Marby. <laughs> oh, this is the season. Check up. Yeah, and then basketball for some. Ano pa? Teka, I'm almost, dun to pala katala to si Roland yung upload ng PowerPoint ko. <laughs> so, the partner is having the access. <laughs> yeah, it takes a bit of two minutes more. Go to parlor, vitamin C. Ah, nice. Okay, yun ah. Pabayad na sang the makmak. Alam ko, ang bills can be paid uh, either mga online, di ba? Tapos, sinero nila yung... Minate nila yung fee. Kumanta transfer kasi ay isang bank na... Dun, dun ka nagbabayad. Ano ka na? So, from BTI to BDO, uh, it used to get, give you like 15, mini, uh, 15 pesos. Now, it's free. Spa! Sabi ni Sherry. <laughs> nice. And uh, gardening po. Nice. I like that. I miss the ano, nature then. Si Ali says, meet friend. Wow. So, kung bibigyan ko ng trending or survey mga responses nyo, a large part of that, parang more on the socializing no? context or socializing efforts. So, so yeah, there you go. I hope you can see my screen. All good? Yes. Right. Yeah. Nice. Oh, Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, walang raise hand dito that yes. indicates that. Eh. <laughs> All right. Don't so, think uh, oh nga, in the not so distant future. So, okay, let's get started. Actually, I didn't get the slides, ko, but uh, pretty much I'll be getting a lot of your input so that we have, you know, mas maramifying uh, interaction. So, we are 
learning what is about psychological first aid and personal resilience. So, what is it all about? Well, I'll skip this one kasi I'm pretty sure na sagot niyo na yan fairly. Thank you for your responses. No? Maganda it mag check in tayo every now and then about that. Looking forward for I know what's next for us. So, I just may move some of my uh, kalat na bar dito. Um, as a session objective, we will find out what is a ecological first aid known as PFA. So a little bit jargon. No? So when you see the word PFA, it means psychological first aid. We will know its objective, no technique in helping out others during this post-pandemic period as well as knowing um, what are personal resilience and then ways that we can you know, make use of that during this crisis. Um, I'll show you the video so that it's a bit more fast. I'm running low at time and speed here. <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, bye for now! Uh, I'm, I'll be on audio. Okay. So, uh, moving forward, these are the section. No? Then we go ahead, we define what is psychological first aid or PFA. Well, um, it doesn't really need to be a psychologist or a certified uh, counselor or registered counselor to be able to provide PFA. Um, but what is it really is use chat immediately uh, after an aftermath of being exposed to a certain crisis or disaster to help family um, learn to uh, deal with um, crisis more effectively. So in other words, um, PFA is in within the umbrella of what we call CIM, which is uh, sorry, CI, ECIM, which is Psychological Crisis Intervention Management. So I, I may be feeding you a lot of jargons, but simply, you know, this is kind of approach that will make use for you to, you know, recover from a crisis. So this is usually designed specifically for public health personnel, public health educators, or even emergency responders, or some workers with little or no formal training about mental health. But is it really different, um, or how is it really different now if um, PFA is um, a crisis intervention? How does it really differ when it comes to other mental health disorders or illnesses? No? Well, for one, PFA is not PTSD. Parang merong background at that time. Is it me? Hindi ako yun na lang. So, can you hear me? Loud and clear pa rin. So, all good? Yes, loud and clear. Yes, yes. Okay. All right. So, well, for one, it's not a PTSD. It's a post-traumatic stress disorder. In other words, hindi siya um, uh, re uh, related, no? In fact, in the term, in terms of continuum of mental health care, siya yung tinatawag nating earliest point or earliest touch point. And then you have the intervention and all the way to. Um, providing um, care of mental health condition which you know covers the psychotherapies, counseling and among others. So what's the difference between PFA to psychotherapies? Well immediately um, um, need to provide for a PFA in other words must short term chat whereas um, psychotherapies and other mental health intervention covers more long term that helps you know an individual grow and um, be able to manage a condition. Now, question: Is some people are saying, "What are the interventions that you can do?" Like many other, um, you know, um, events. Like you could be on a respite break, you can have some debriefing, or you can have some sabi na nila a little time off, like a vacation or travel for for that matter. So, pwede kanya kanya journey na tong intervention. So in that in that continuum, no. Ito yung pinatawag natin, PFA as the first touch point. Just like when you need a very quick remedy for men, uh, physical, like your medical first aid. The same way with PFA, you need some level of assistance emotionally and psychologically. So, but how do we do that? What are the objectives? Very simplistic in that sense because it, uh, in the PFA, it mitigates and stabilizes 
the presence of acute distress. Pero question, ano po ang acute distress? Um, well, sabi nga, stress is is part of life. <laughs> stress is uh, it's like breathing air. <laughs> so, um, it's a normal to have a stress, no? So, to define that, it's a, our natural responses or reactions to environment or internal disturbances that, you know, can be considered as adaptive in nature, union stress. There are also some, you know, um, definitions of stress like distress or you stress. But this stress is a little negative siya in the sense that it can be very severe or prolonged or even both. So, distress yon. Whereas a new stress is a positive kind of stress. For example, yung, do you know, pag, pag you join ka ng uh, competition, you know, what's happening on the pageant, and yun, uh, pag sa pageant competition, under stress din yan eh. Uh, in, the, in the line of uh, competition, beauty under stress, parang ganyan. <laughs> so, um, ang, ang acute distress, or commonly known as acute a stress disorder can be characterized and can be severe disassociation and other symptoms uh, that occur within one month after exposure to as an extreme traumatic stressor. So what these uh, providers, like for example, if you're PFA trained, you get to be trained on how to listen reflectively, differentiate in benign and uh, capacitating psychological disorder, in other words, you can spot which one needed further help and you can also mitigate the distress and dysfunction and practice uh, personal self-care. So, doesn't sound as, you know, um, kumbaga, kailangan highly equipped ka with many mental health uh, training, but at least it gives you a little bit of uh, clinical eye, so to speak, that you are aware of yung mga classic na acute stress disorder. So, sim uh, here are the following, no? Um, sabi nga nila, simple lang naman yan, but again, <laughs> frequency is the name of the game. So, meron lang uh, ang ASD, would, you would have a symptoms of flashback, may nightmares ka, you have some avoidance of reminders of the event, even difficulty remembering things, diso dissociation, Ito yung, um, when you try to dissociate, eh, nagkakaroon ng disconnection from from the environment or what you used to do. Nakakalimutan mo very quickly and as if it never happened. No? Um, there's an inability to experience positive emotions. There's a presence of anxiety. There are sleep disturbances, irritability, and even difficulty in concentrating. So, um, this can be disturbing actually or distressing to look. These are pictures in this uh, situation that we are having. Uh, first three pictures are pictures in uh, Hong Kong actually. So they're actually in a very isolated small space that you crop in the bar and well I tried to look for the ones in the Filipinas version of the last picture. But I'm basically counting spacing pa, no? So all these sites are giving us, uh, of course, not, not a very quality life's, lifestyle or even in routine, uh, what we can say, in a daily rhythm that when we wake up, isang, uh, isang kumaga, uh, reach out mo lang, and dito na yung uh, what you need to do, and then situated ka sa isang very small space that can, you know, alarm a lot of um, stressful triggers for you. Um, I would like to talk about very short lang about depression, but because the parang uh, they say susceptible that you get to experience some of this, especially kung heightened in this hysteria about bad news, uh, on social media or from many you know uh, sources of information. So, but we will not be dwelling too much on this because this is not our today's topic, but at least. Some of ideas na, that you get to know, and yung mga symptoms na. So you have this yeah, change of mood, decreased concentration, even some interest, also expressions of worthlessness, change in appetite, which you know, affecting your weight, 
stress, a change in sleeping pattern, even your grades, no, kung ikaw ay isang student, and you may resort to substance abuse. But um, depression is not just about feeling bad, it's just it's about our emotions. There are actually the four quadrants that are in to interplay about uh, the expression of depression as a symptom. You need get to have uh, experience as emotion, in thought process mode, there, there are behaviors that you commit, and then there are physical impact as well. For example, single out items and emotions. Ano yung, uh, in the pandemic situation, the common emotions that we have, maybe we get to feel angry when we see the news, or in fact, angry at the government, or maybe uh, anxious, but you know what? We will eat next day or next week, how long, etc., because of uncertainties. So, single out tayo ng mga thoughts about um, the current situation. You tend to be more confused. Uh, sometimes um, you have trouble concentrating. If you are, for example, into school, may tinatapos kang requirement, you have a lot of criticism, not just for yourself, but even also for others. In a behavior, you tend to do what? You ne neglect what you're supposed to do, you tend to maybe not eat, tend to have trouble sleeping, and you may resort to crying, or even isolate yourself na hindi na ako magkakwento kasi nag-load up siya ng magandang picture ng kanyang lunch. Ako, ang lunch ko lang ganito. <laughs> and it's so, it happens, it felt, you know, some impact on you na parang buti pa siya, nakaka-afford, ako hindi, etc., etc. So, you tend to compare, nag-heighten lalo yung uh, behaviors mo of avoiding these things. Physical, well, you tend to what? There's a lack of energy and, you know, maybe even have some pains and aches na hindi mo naman na-explain that you don't used to have before. Ngayon, mas, parang mas mabigat, no, yung katawan. So, uh, in, a, in a snapshot, no, eh, hindi ito basta mangyayari all together. It, it, you have to observe that it can happen um, at least two weeks of depressed mood. So, yun ang ano niya, duration niya. Uh, if it's frequent to be there in the next two weeks and it has the following, no, may weight loss effects on you, you have trouble sleeping, with, you know, with, uh, coming into uh, like insomnia uh, for a state, or there's agitation, etc. All the way. So, um, there is a um, uh, intentionality for you when you now think na I can get enough help that I, I need. So, probably I can self-diagnose and if I strongly feel na mukhang suspected na I have this and this and that, uh, this is where the PSA can be flagged and so the PSA at that point can get you to a referral to a uh, professional mental health, uh, uh, like for, for example a counselor or a psychologist to intervene. No? Um, this is where um, I'm trying to uh, tie things up so so that hindi siya totally um, ignored yung uh, mental health disorder but rather uh, you as a PSA uh, trained, you get to have that um, skills to detect which ones needing more attention and versus the ones that you think are able to recover well. So, um, let's have a quick drill. I hope you are familiar with force field analysis. Uh, but I mean, topic not yet. definitely you what we are encountering or experiencing. So, ano kaya yung impact ng ECQ? Can you think about that? Okay, medyo nawala. Hello? Hi there, again. All good. Nakamute na po. Okay. So, let's have these two kinds of, uh, kasi pag force field analysis, ito yung binobone natin, ang boning out natin, ano yung uh, details na two sides. Meron driving forces and restraining or uh, forces, which is having a risk. So, driving forces na opportunities. And you can leave your answers at chat box or maybe come out of mute. Uh, I'm just thinking nyo yung impact of the ECQ. Mga opportunities na na felt nyo on the ground. So, Uh, I actually, uh, oh, sige, ulitin ko yung question. 
can you identify some driving forces which are the opportunities while on ECQ? Anong impact on you? Sige, nakastand ba ako sa chat? I'm trying to uh, uh, check ang inyong uh, engagement if there's some, you know, uh, thoughts running. Let's see. Si Ronald says, online learning. Nice. Uh, si Miss Christina said, more time for the family. That's true. Dovey uh, Mark said, uh, oh, na. learning new things. That's good. Free online courses according to Mary Ann. And Henry says, more time for self and family. That's true. More uh, personal time, no? quality time for them. Yes, family bonding. Miss Bertie said, ah, medyo mabilis na, ang dami na. <laughs> uh, I learned that I like gardening pala, o oh, diba? You, you knew you had a good song. Uh, Miss uh, Sheryl said, distant, or distant learning, yes. Family time for Miss Maurice, or sorry, sir pala. <laughs> Maurice, Oliver. And then Epifania, uh, sorry, I have to call you my first name. <laughs> uh, this challenge, wow. That's, that's I know, a very nice perspective. Uh huh. And Dia, Dia, please. Tama yung pag sabi ko. Is learning from CILB. Woohoo! Wow, now answer, Roland. <laughs> and then our, our really said more family time. Thank you. And then says last would be about new teaching strategies. That's very interesting. So, parang in, in, in a large uh, echo na in yung answers or responses, parang more on the quality time on family, no? And then learning as well. So, kaya na kung mga few things na share dito. So, uh, fairly na na-cover nyo, no? So, there's a uh, new learning skills, yan, online, because everything now practically is learned virtually, on, I mean, online. Learn to be flexible, adaptable, and creative. You have a chance to help others. You get to exercise empathy and compassion in your own right and, and right time and right way, no? Um, you experience more family bonding. I think a lot, a lot of you have, you know, expressed that. And uh, you get to have more time to read and be creative. And of course, having a new exam that merong nagsagot sa inyo is having a challenge, meaning having to gain a new perspective. Okay, kami ng side naman. Ano naman yung mga tinatawag natin risk training courses or other words yung mga risk? Ito naman yung negative side of this uh, experience. Any um, top of mind? Maybe one or two of that? You can share that in the chat box. Ano the effects on or impact on you? Hello? Okay. Somebody out there, hello? Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, let me do it guys on the next slide. Uh, anyone who would like to share in the chat box again, back to it, risk training forces. Risks that you think, um, you know, that are negatively impacting your way of life. Naglagay ako, ha? Okay, kunwari, uh, may sumagot na. <laughs> but uh, some of uh, the things that I have in mind is in the inadequate basic needs. Yep, uh, ripple effect din ito ng people being out of the job or are out of work or probably suspended in work now without pay. Actually, in, in, the, in the consulting firm that I am with, um, we specialize in change management and talent management. I also realized that uh, it's not even the best time that we, our business is flourishing because we cater outplacement services. When we say outplacement services, we provide um, coaching mainly and then uh, aiding these people who were retrenched from, from work or they were laid off. So we provide them a lot of career coaching and counseling and prepare their resumes, how to do well in interviews, and give them a host of many information about what's out there, what's life after your company, something like that. So lahat uh, affecting not just the aspect of career, even their family, 
their personal life, their even spiritual life, and um, even among others. No? There's uh, just a stream of many things that like, people affect when, once a person is out of work. So, kasama na yung basic needs. Then, more um, the training courses that you know you think that ECQ has you know, impacted you. Sorry, I hope it's not very bothering. Hmm, ano pa? Anyone? Aha, uh -huh. sige. I'll just keep opening my, ano, my uh, uh, answers to this. So there's emotional triggers. These are the negative ones. There are high risk for financial and health condition. You can also be experiencing some sense of burden because of isolation and halted yung mga plans natin or the travel or even personal goals. In fact, um, that last, uh, two days ago, uh, I have a neighbor who came here to help, you know, look over yung kanyang child, uh, five years old, and may autism siya, and, but because they had to rush to the hospital because she's been feeling unwell for the past week. Uh, they've been trying to conceive a baby na asunod, no, na anak since last year. And then, um, she came to get, you know, uh, some, you know, uh, help na may, in any way, like referral, ganyan. Sabi ko, well, I hope you get the, the, the luck now because ang um, hirap makaharap ng doctors na in the hospital considering yung, um, uh, inadequacy ng health workers nowadays because lahat ng you know, energies and attention is in the COVID. So, um, unfortunately, hindi siya nakakita ng doctor or what kasi she tested positive pero dubious siya sa result. Doesn't seem like, you know, it's pan out as a positive. But she's been uh, feeling uh, differently. Uh, my morning sickness siya, etc. I just want to confirm that. And uh, she's still feeling bad at this part. So, they've been wanting to have another child. So, kasama yun, mukhang uh, sh shattered with many uh, parang, uh, parang quality pregnancy experience siya nowadays. Kasi sabi niya, what if may ECQ pa rin? And then, I will never get the chance to um, see uh, an OB, na I get to do some trans B, etc., etc. So, I just wanted to also know what vitamins at this, at this time that I need, etc. So, for a little uh, information that I know in my own journey, so I get to give some advices, but, syempre, we really refer them to all these things, especially kung may medicine intervention na. So, yung mga personal goals natin at this point in time can be actually greatly challenged, no? even extremely uh, parang siguro suspended or even uh, postponed. So, these things are considered in, in, in the risk. So, when we um, try to look at both sides, um, I actually if you've heard about Victor Franco, uh, sabi niya, uh, she, uh, isa siya sa mga survivor ng Nazi death camp. Uh, at the time of the Holocaust, um, he said very nice. Came out a very nice book. He's a psychiatrist, na 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 survived, no no. I'm saying that between uh, stimulus and response, there is a space. Kasi sabi nga natin, pag may stimulus, mag-respond ka to that. Pero may space yon and in that space, you get to choose. No? Meron kang choice between knowing uh, the good and the bad side. And in so doing, if whatever choices you make, it gives you some level of freedom, empowerment, autonomy, and control. So, um, looking at the ECQ impact, which ones really you would like to focus on? And this is where we will introduce a lot of techniques no, in the PFA and resilience. So, let's go over the techniques for PFA. Um, it has an acronym called RAPID. Para magilis tandaan, we make it very simple. Uh, I'm actually using the model of Dr. Everly from 2005. He is one of the um, professor at John Hopkins University. I'm actually attending at this time his um, class uh, online for a five-week run. Um, and uh, we're into it now. I'm on my week, week three right now. So I'm pretty much actually doing a lot of it 
parang ala eco ano to eco learning experience so what is rapid rapid alone is actually a two week uh, learning uh, session so i have to make this very in a, in a, line, in a very condensed uh, approach so it means rapport um it means when we build rapport, we are exercising reflective listening. And when we say reflective listening, it means uh, commonly known as active listening. Uh, we will learn more about that later on. And when we say assessment, we mean who actually needs it. This is not the assessment like a pa paper or a pen or psychological assessment, but it's actually assessing the situation uh, in terms of people have been exposed to certain crises or disturbance is to really check on who really needs it. Next is prioritization, which me, which asks who should be helped first because a lot of people have different you know, ways to cope. Others, you know, uh, cope effectively better than others. So it's in your um, clinical eye to find out who really need most you know, to prioritize, who needs to be helped first. And then is I for intervention, which means now what do you do? And then lastly is to ask, have we been effective in providing intervention? And then how are we doing our, on that mat matter or even making a follow-up? All right, so maraming um, gusto sabihin for the rest of the RI and even, yeah, the I actually, but uh, because of a uh, one hour uh, session, maybe we may have a lack of time, but you can actually uh, search more about the rapid technique. But let me, um, within our control, within our area of influence, I think um, I'm much paid attention to, to the PFA um, approach is about reflective listening. Um, as defined, no, it is uh, it seems to derive its effectiveness from communicating that someone must have a willingness to, to listen, rapport, be able to build rapport that is aligned, um, and of course avoids argument, value in what the other person has to say, a desire to assist in problem solving, and a sense of interpersonal support. This is the best single predictor of human resilience. And this is where I'll be ending later on, on the, the second half of our session. Now, let's have a quick drill. Aha. Uh -huh. For example, you were um, you were told that there's a PUI palette, hindi PIU, person under. Uh, switch lang, uh, it's a bit of mystery. there. Person under investigation in your neighborhood. What, what most likely you will do? Anyone? Ano, anong, anong, uh, how would you react that, you know, you know that there was someone na confirmed na may PUI in your neighborhood? What are you talking about? Ipamas ako. Parang uh, late na yan, sir, uh, para sa uh, yung Holy Week. <laughs> Okay, isa iba. Uh, anyone else? You can come out of mute or uh, me or in the chat box. Ano yung kayong possibly ang reactions nyo? Or could be na nangyari nga ito sa inyo? Anyone? Matatakot. Matatakot. Yeah. yeah. Of course. And um, in, in fact, out of the takot is uh, paano na? Anong, anong gagawin? Anong levels of protection I can do? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Do you want to come up? next slide. Na. Very interesting. Uh-huh. Somebody's coming out of mute. Lana? Para gusto mong sisihin, bakit kaya ito na pagiging maging ano? Ah, uh, o nga. Yeah. There must be a story behind that, right? So, <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Para nga. Ay, hindi naman ako, ba't ka meron yan? Baka nagpupunta, etc., etc. And many, you know, other thoughts about just trying to find the reason. That's true. Okay, and this is this is actually true, ah. Huh? Um, um, nangyari ito sa isang interaction ko. I, I, I maintain about two people in my uh, coaching work. 
uh, na fellow coaches then and then we get to have this bonding on uh, even non business so um and she surprised me with this situation so I mean hey guys may uh, PUI sa neighborhood I mean oh wow really and you know we keep chatting and then she gave me this picture so she actually sent a bag of goodies and then it says hey neighbor get well soon I go wow that's a that's a lot of uh having a Victor Fractal a choice of response na, that the space she chose was the part that you know maintaining a positive high spirited spirit I mean high spirited uh, attempt to lift up somebody even if it's something that you know even will you know cost you because you know they become gonna expose etc but oh wow and so we go can I borrow your picture as I was trying to process things on my own so we go I thought I could you know um, put this a little bit more of emphasis when we're trying to also um, practice the PFA so what is we're still on with a reflective reasoning so coming into its practice let's have a quick drill no? uh, I, I use uh, Dr. Everly's um, questions here and possible responses that you can choose. Unwabe, okay, person in distress. I lost my home in the fire. I lost a lot of things of value to me. Not just financial value, but personal value. There's a person sharing, no? A person in distress. So possible responses, matter number one, you should contact your insurance company, ASAP. Or number two, have you contacted your insurance company yet? So, kind of prompting channel. And then third, how are you coping with all these losses? And then fourth, sounds like this fire was devastating on so many levels. So among all these four, who do you think you may have a reflection ng, uh, or you may have most likely to have a reflective listening uh, content in terms of responses? Question number five. Number three, Pussy Bang. Thank you. For the others? Any guesses? Number four. Number four, three. Three, okay. <laughs> three and four, parang naglalaro ata tayo doon, no? Okay, so, himayin po natin, alin dito ang uh, naman, or content no, ng, as we say, it is ko three and four na, let's see. Yeah. So, I'll search natin. Number one, ang, ang response na, you should contact your insurance company ASAP. Well, this is a solution directive statement designed to fix, quote unquote, the problem. It assumes the house was insured. It ignores any personal impact issues. And it's not reflective, apparently. So, X na yan. <laughs> Number two, have you contacted your insurance company yet? So, this is um, a closed ended question. It tries to fix the problem. It makes an assumption. You know, assume na na baka nag-contact na nga siya prior no, sharing it. And then it elicits an information but it's not reflective. Let's see the three and four, no? Three say, uh, answers for us. How do we cope with all these losses? Somebody's uh, not on you. All right. This is uh, this open-ended question um, recognizes the human aspect of the disaster. Uh, it also implies concern for the person, but it's not reflective. So yes, we had a four. Sounds like this fire was devastating on so many levels. But an affirmation, because uh, it, 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 it could have been even uh, much worse, or it could have you know been a lot of uh, distress or harm or effects on you. So, uh, this reflective paraphrase acknowledges and validates both the impact of the loss and further opens the door for the person in distress to discuss personal losses beyond just the tangible. Okay, let's try again. Here is an example, but I don't have the, the the possible responses. I'd like to hear it from you. So I'll just read uh, a person in distress. My daughter is a nurse and has been tirelessly working for two and a half months. Now she is she feels 
Malanese. I feel sickly and have started to show symptoms of COVID-19. This is a very tough situation to be in and we don't know how much time we can keep at this. So I find possible this constant and cool, we're practicing reflective listening. Most possibly. Um, anyone? More. Aha. Teka, pumasok na. Ah, ngayon ko lang nakita ang mostly responses ng ECQ kanina. Thank you. There's scarcity of resources, etc., etc. Okay, um, fast forward. <laughs> Uh, reflective listening, according to, to Roland, ginagawa namin uh, support during this business learning mode. Ah, interesting. You're on it. Thank you, sir. Good to know. Okay, I'm back to my uh, slide. So, ano kaya possibly, you know, pwede natin doing response when somebody in distress has uh, shared his or her uh, thoughts having to experience this? Anyone? On the chat? Maybe you can come out of here. Pwede yung Tagalog din. Okay din naman. <laughs> Parang, oh, talaga. Ganyan. Oh, talaga. Two and a half months. That's a long time. Uh, Kuyat siya siguro. Lagi. It must be hard. Uh, kamusta ang weight niya? Ganyan. So, it's having to show more of empathy because tirelessly, sabi niya, di ba? And then, I, sabi niya, tough situation. It's, um, in, in last liner niya, it, it talks about uncertainties. It's a very tough situation, and we don't know how much time. Because at the end, she doesn't have the answer. There's a, this, there's a futuristic orientation that hindi niya alam ng gagawin niya. It can be a very daunting experience. So, um, yeah, um, you can be as you know, uh, in a more comfortable uh, language, na daily use na ginagamit niyo. You can, you can do that. And uh, alam niya kung hindi mo niya kilala, for example, ano yung uh, uh, level na creating uh, very understandable para sa kanya, no? Uh, that's where you can, you know, take off. Um, unless mayroong gusto pang maghabol on the chat who would like to give a sample of a, a reflective message? Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes, sir. Hello, ma'am. Out of the Philippines, I'm from Japan. Ah, Japan. Okay. Ma'am, ano siguro? Uh, probably, I would be telling her na uh, your daughter is a nurse. Probably, she knows much about how she can deal with it. Kasi medyo aware siya doon. So, I would tell her. At this point, I think uh, we would be listening to your daughter more on what she thinks will be best to do para uh, harapin niya yung case niya. Yeah, and yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Wow, well, that's a very honorable thing you do out there. Uh, salute to you, sir. <laughs> um, ingat then, ingat, ingat. Um, thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you, sir. And I'm glad you're still on this. Um, that's amazing. That's, I'm humbled. Uh, what you do out there versus, you know, the part that you still want to learn. And it's something um, I am just floored. Thank you. Well, uh, yeah. It's really coming out to, you know, uh, out with a, an expression of in focus on the daughter. And and, and uh, perhaps this is a mom, no, uh, sharing. Uh, very worried yung kanyang um, statement here. And uh, you can actually work around with with the emotions, with with um, the current uh, thoughts niya about, you know, or even probably learn to listen more about what you think will be her uh, courses of action given um, yung situation that uh, sickly in daughter niya and he plans what she would uh, what are the things that she plans to do no? you, can, uh, you can actually uh, do some follow up uh, statement on that alright so uh, let's try again okay well according to uh, you know evidences it suggests that psychological crisis intervention can increase the perception of personal resilience and preparedness, as well as enhanced community resilience. Over the years, um, actually, resilience play a little bit of bias. No, in in, in for me, because <laughs> this is my dissertation <laughs> paper, um, resilience, pala, it have been uh, 
already studied or has gained scholarly attention for the past 40 years. And it can be used in many contexts. It actually starts in physics. Um, so, um, resilience is a word that originally comes from science, uh, physics particularly. It describes a characteristic of a substance or objects that bounce back to its original shape after being stretched or pulled or somehow impacted by external forces. Um, well, the opposite of resilient substance is something that can be broken easily or when, uh, once broken does not re uh, remain uh, or remains broken. So, parang itong uh, animation po, so meron kang shape and you were, uh, as a stress ball, uh, you were parang squeezed and then you change your shape and when you are a resilient material, <laughs> you bounce back to your original shape. Well, in, uh, since I mentioned that uh, resilience has been used in many contexts, for us at Lehigh at Harrison, um, we offer building personal resilience to uh, a lot of employees who are not really going away, not, you know, being retrenched, or, but they, we also cater for the ones who are left behind. I call them in leaver and stayer. <laughs> so for the stayers, we offer uh, certain workshop topics that talks about resilience, how to deal with change. And we say change, these are the ones impacting the change on their careers, the change on how they do things and, you know, build their uh, business relationship. Um, so it was defined in our material the ability to remain flexible and take initiatives in the midst of ambiguity and change. It means have, um, it, it covers crucial points, which uh, mean the recovery of time and uh, maintenance of positivity and productivity. Um, because those these are experiences. No? Once, uh, for example, in a pharmaceutical company, uh, they uh, lay off about say 500 med reps, and out of this 500 med reps, for example, the oncology lang na bawa na division. Um, you ALS, say for example, in a department you are five, uh, and then the redundant yung tatlo. So yung dalawang na iwan may be doing or performing yung mga tasks na inalisan ng dalawa. Ah, sorry, ng tatlo. <laughs> so in a way, you are actually what uh, doing a job for three people. Pangalan. So they have that kind of scenario, no? um, and uh, a great number of them echo their trouble coping with it and then how to do it better still the same time adjusting and learning and the, the whole gamut of adjustment so they say that you they must remain flexible uh, at the same time be able to make an output still performing well Lo uh, looking at this graph yung kanyang crest point no yung pinaka gitna and you are expected to have this performance and of course you are in the peak of your resilience then over time as the stress uh, you know permeate and um, increase uh, you have a high stress and then uh, an the effect will have a low res uh, resilience for you now uh, this is this is about just change management resilience are also uh, in the context of disability management and this is my picture actually <laughs> Um, uh, this is the framework I uh, proposed, and it's still unpublished, but my title was about conceptualizing our resilience. These are the narratives of families, so I made use narrative research. Um, and in here, I asked 20 individuals or 10 families uh, using a triangulation of parent, sibling, and the uh, ASD children themselves. I really had trouble with the ASD because from severe, from mild to severe uh, condition. Kasi yun. So, when I say had trouble because uh, I couldn't get much information. No? So, in a very basal uh, context, lang ako nakakuha ng mga information. But uh, the question um, usually uh, I, I ask parents is how did you raise your child? So, from the childhood stories to adolescent stage, all the way to adulthood. There are many stories, and in the boxes, you will see their sequential pattern of how they were able to cruise through life, no, in periodic uh, stages. Na yan. And then it came out that there is a focus on acceptance during childhood, 
which is I propose there na hindi one time, big time mga acceptance, but intermittently throughout time. And then, um, oops, can you still see my slide? Parang nga wala? Aha! Wala po. Wala po. Nasaan siya? <laughs> Where is it? Where art thou? Aha! What? already exist. <laughs> so, uh, huh, what just happened? Uh, Baka na-click nyo po yung unshare. You just click share again. Aha, uh -huh, I'm on it. Sandali. Uh, da -da -da. Wala siya. Sorry. Hmm, interesting. Kaya hindi naman pwede na wala basta lang din yung file ko. Should I open it again? Um, yeah. When I click browse and then upload from my computer and then I say I do open, I yeah. click both. Ah, anyway, I think I in time. How much time do I have? Uh, I have like two more minutes. Okay, <laughs> so I'll just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened, but here is what it is. So anyway, uh, May resilience uh, concept and disability, and now we are focusing on resilience in pandemic. Okay, so I uh, most likely we can uh, anchor ourselves in because this is very important now that because we're on it. So resilience in young pandemic is according to Dr. Michael, um, resilience in pandemic that he wrote in Psychology Today, and he's a professor in engineering psychology, but mostly in the military now. So he said. Uh, resilience is the psychological quality that allows some people to be knocked down by adversities of life and come back as least as strong as before. So, as very simplistic in term, you know, just coming back. So, you dealt with adversities and then just coming back. Now, pero, so I think your friends say there's a great, you know, you, uh, that is also, yeah, you're passionate about, about, you know, skill based man to learn a lot, etc. Um, um, funny, funny experience with resilience, however, is there is a presence of crisis, a difficulty, adverse, mga uh, adversities in life, mga difficulties, dilemma, all problems. No? And you know, nadiging, uh, what makes you resilient? Because without it, you're not resilient. So, I don't have any sense to then go. So, what I'm saying, it is like, Unnecessary evil. Yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, without it, you cannot be resilient. So, parang kailangan ka ma-expose doon sa stress or adversities of life. Um, also, Dr. Matthew emphasizes that the resilience trajectory, the person shows a temporary reduction in adjustment, but returns to normal when the threat diminishes. They bend, but they do not break. And finally, some people experience personal growth in response to danger and adversity. In other words, some people can come out strong, no, or even stronger. So it's again, wow. So it's something that people can look forward to. In other words, when all these things are, you know, done, kapag uh, lang natin historically, this is what it was before in pandemic days. This is how our lives are being, la la la. You're coming out actually with a better, probably, set of what values, a uh, more enhanced um, level of, say, tolerance, siguro, or frustration tolerance for that matter. So you come out in an you know, improved way, better, wiser, stronger. Um, there are six pillars. My slide is not here yet. <laughs> Um, that um, so so, so dami ng mga resilience materials that I, I went through over the course of time. Um, I I uh, this is a special occasion to me in 2016 pa. So I'm four years na uh, I'm on it. So um, I'm looking at a lot of resources and so far na nasa tingin ko ay nagstand out to be you know suitable to the pandemic situation uh, are the work of uh, is the work of Roberts. Gemma, 
uh, Gemma is her first name and Roberts is her last name. Oh, there you go. Uh -huh. Let's do some fast forward here. You can see now my slide, no? I'm, I'm supposing. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Yep, we're almost done. So, we'll a few more slides. Uh, what about the like, fast forward? Sorry, I'm not going to have any questions. Uh huh. So, we're done with this. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's okay. Almost there. So there are six pillars of resilience according to Robert. So number one is confidence. Uh, in sabi to uh, ni Bandura, no? Uh, in may self belief ka. Kasi nahanap ko ang uh, may mga research kasi na uh, test, testing yung internal properties ng resilience. Sabi nila may self determination and uh, may uh, self efficacy. And ang efficacy is yung belief. So, found siya sa properties ng confidence. So, yan. So, meron kang control and strength. Adaptability is being flexible thinking. You're adaptable. And, um, well, there is also a review and refine. Positivity, you try to avoid traps. Realistic optimism. And you can steer energy, perspective, um, challenge thoughts, detect root cause, practice acceptance, and mastery are growth mindset, goal setting, create flow, stamina, as the last one, we have strategy, support system, and structure. It's going to be easy to just say, but well, here's my question for all of you. Maybe you can really answer now, but something that you can mull over. Well, which one of these six you think you um, make, that you are very weak at? Or something that uh, you uh, needs a lot of uh, to, you know, to work on? Uh, areas that I need to focus my improvement. <laughs> So you don't have to answer now, but you know something that you may want to rethink. I don't know factors na yon and um, but what can I do? So, uh huh. Like oh sorry, I four, four minutes no extend. <laughs> so well, it's not a perspective. We say perception is our our eyes sees what our mind chooses to see. We have different um, discipline and expertise, but. You know, we look at the areas kung ano lang na saan tayo, like the one in here in the picture, yung blind elephant and, uh, ano, blind uh, elephant with, with six ba to? <laughs> six blind uh, experts. So they, they define it in the way how they, uh, in their own world, very sub subjective. In times of crisis, our brain signals defense for survival as auto response. To feel happy and see the positive side is not an automatic brain wiring. Kasi, sabi nga ng mga neuroscientists, ang brain natin is meant for survival. Kaya sa may mga defense mechanism. It doesn't, you know, come out na naging in a happy state. Kailangan intentional na effort yan on your end. So, actually, I got this part. Before you push the panic button, <laughs> I was, uh, my daughter was uh, watching kasi yung Toy Story. Yeah, hindi niya, the panic is attacking me. O, diba? If you hear the statement, the panic is attacking me. So, when the external force is <laughs> it's not intrinsic in you. You can look at it that way. So, we can focus on our physical and mental health. I got this from the Ocu Health, uh, Home Health Care. It's actually shared to my mom. So, I go, can I use some of their um, advices here? So, it's going physical here. And um, I'm not endorsing yoga. I've done this like two years ago. It didn't work for me, so I'm in another kind of uh, physical uh, regimen but, and uh, workout. But yeah, you can actually try to do this for also if it gives you some meditation. Um, make sure that you have an up sleep. You have some routine established to have a quality sleep. Um, go to bed at the same time each night if you can. Yeah, mean down and stop working, uh, you must have some uh, structured uh, timeline for how you will spend the day, be able to socially connect, we may be physically distant, no, but socially connected, uh, learn as much as you can, uh, and I'm pretty glad that you guys are able to join us here, I'm, I also look forward to call learn with you, and yet, uh, be also mindful of who you keep in touch with, and of course, there's many ways that uh, you can choose now. Uh, it's a mindful or mindful? <laughs> so I think you get the idea. 
uh, I attended a mindfulness therapy uh, about siguro sometime January to Feb, parang six week grand siya sa mindfulness center, Feli Center, and I one of my take there was or takeaway there was um, to really live, living in the present moment. Even your breathing exercise uh, takes you uh, a lot of uh, parang energizing um, experience for you. Uh, so they suggest here na meron kang 4 seconds to inhale 1, 2, 3, 4 and then hold it for 7 seconds 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and then uh, come out of it at 8 seconds so ex, uh, yung uh, pag exhale mo is 8 seconds but uh, well, it's really just getting to you know feel your sensation your body uh, enjoying the present moment uh, yesterday I was with my daughter in our parang ala ano ba to, front yard and then we're looking at the crowds and um so that is about like a 15 minute exercise of mindfulness for me and then so when you're looking at the clouds so how do you feel i feel the wind blowing in my skin and then i can hear the yung, yung, yung mga uh chirping ng birds and then yung mga pagsuri ng mga dahon sa <laughs> so, so all these things that like, it, it you have to catch your thoughts and then how to do that is to again pay attention on your present moment so that can help a lot now um, this is where I end um, identify facts that you can control so in terms of physical make sure that you keep a health related routine and also what is advice um, keep a lifestyle now make sure there are varieties of it sabi nga kung mag Luto ka, mag adobo ng adobo ng adobo ng adobo. Uh, also, on personal, uh, make sure that you have a psychological and emotional sources that you think will be helpful to keep you um, healthy both in your thought process and in your uh, way of reasoning. And of course, financial, maybe uh, be able to do uh, small things like knowing what are the basic needs and wants. Um, maybe you can also give some examples in your own time if you get the chance to interact with somebody, whether in chat or uh, or in, in a FaceTime. Um, and oh yeah, some of my work here, yung nasa left side is the work of my colleague at work. Uh, the work of my colleague na she came out with this ano to, adult coloring book. <laughs> and in the right side is my work. Uh, I think uh, sabi ng coloring book is it's in Amsterdam, Amsterdam ata siya na the Netherlands. I'm not been there so uh, just playing along with my imagination I mean pwedeng kulay-kulay niya. Um, mm, matagal na tong book na to sa bahay. Nan-earth ko na lang siya. So when I think when I have so much things you know in mind to think about to, to uh, process now I take some time uh, intentionally and forcefully <laughs> to uh, get some air and then probably stroke a little bit on, on this on the art art part and again it's quite enough kung saan kayo merong uh, interest and then learn to help others to help self this is where you can increase your social network you can promote your gratitude by self-awareness practice also enhances your personal values and keeps you productive. Uh, well, something that may require in uh, living a life that you haven't volunteered is a life that, you know, I mean, you are living a limited life. Wow, that's a lot of challenge actually. I am living a limited life if I haven't volunteered. So maybe it's the best time to do that now when, whenever you can. And this is my favorite slide. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sorry to extend. I know if you have some questions there, maybe we can have like a five minute questions. Q and A. Uh, sir Roland. Uh, uh, gusto lang namin. Uh, so, uh, on behalf of CILP, thank you so much, Doc. Uh, doc. Uh, before anything else, we would like to acknowledge the presence of our vicar. Um, hello, Dr. Saez. We have seen that you have been um, commenting in our chat box. So, welcome to our webinar series. Uh, if there's anything that you would like to say to the faculty here, um, please do, uh, do so. We would like to hear something from you. So, hi, sir. Hello. Hello. Can I be heard? Yes, sir. Yes, po. Alam po kayo po kayo lahat. Maraming tayong salamat, Dr. Sakdalan, for this wonderful webinar. 
I was just told by a colleague that um, a webinar is currently being held, so I quickly joined it to see how it has been going. And hopefully, those six pillars that you've mentioned, confidence and other things, um, would turn out to be better after all these things end. Uh, the question of whether are we going to go back to normal, are we going to be as malleable as that stress ball in which after being squeezed so tightly, we'll go back to our, our original shape. Personally, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think we can ever go back to normal. But we have a choice. It's either we go back worse or we go, we go back better. And hopefully... Um, with this and, and all the efforts that the members of the community are doing, we can all go back better and stronger once the, this pandemic ends. Gusto ko lang po magpasalamat sa lahat ng members ng community, lalong-lalo na po ang ating mga faculty, na hanggang ngayon ay humahaba ang pasensya at pangunawa para mapatuloy ang learning sa ating pamantasan. Um, Gusto ko lang po rin i-emphasize na tayo pang school ay hindi naman ang pinakamagaling na school sa buong mundo. Ngunit sa tingin ko, nasa posisyon na tayo na para manguna at hindi sumunod sa ibang schools. Uh, so ang mga magiging desisyon po natin ngayon at sa mga susunod ay base sa ating assessment na ating sitwasyon bilang isang pamantasan. Sa kakabuti po ng ating pamantasan. Mabuhay po kayong lahat ulit Pakibisita po ang ating... Uh, sorry ma'am, dapat po sa talan. I'm taking so much of your time. Just a more... Okay, okay. <laughs> Pakibisit lang po ang ating um, distance learning mode website kasi nandun po lahat ng mga advisories. And please, uh, we are we are a work in progress. Uh, ch channels of communication are all open. So kindly communicate them with your deans. We have a regular meeting every Tuesday. So we could attend to them as much, as effective, and as speedy as possible. Yun lang po. Salamat pong ng marami. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.